Welcome back, everyone. Today, I want to teach you a trick that I think uh, the savviest investors are doing with their money instead of keeping it in cash in the bank. Okay, so we'll get started today, and I'll I'll show you some of these tricks later. But the first thing to understand uh, is a lot of investors are worried about inflation, and if you look across many things such as commodities, whether that be copper, uh, plastic, um, that lumber. Uh, and you look at any of the commodity ETFs, they're all skyrocketing. I had call options on um, commodity ETFs about two months ago because it was almost a, a, a guaranteed lift due to supply chain constraints, due to the problems we we saw over in the channel with the uh, the blockage. And also, one of the big things is that a lot of suppliers anticipated that COVID was going to have a massive uh, you know headwind against all of the supplies, all of the materials out there, all the commodities. And actually the opposite happened. People started buying more from Amazon. Uh, people continued to move to other homes. There was a lot of pressure put on an already constrained commodity market. So naturally we're seeing uh, inflation across all of those um, items. Additionally, because of supply chain shortages, you're seeing problems with car manufacturers. Uh, Tesla can't get enough chips to produce cars. And the last quarterly report, Elon was talking about you know, the problems with production that they, they might fall short of the numbers due to the supply chain issues. So across the board, we're seeing massive hits to um, well not hits, I guess we're seeing massive inflation to uh, a lot of these markets. OK, now I say this because what that means is if you look at the markets and right now we're looking at about 10 to 15 percent um, inflation to a lot of the cost of goods. If you have a dollar, you effectively just lost 10 to 15% as it's sitting in the bank, right? And that's why people are telling us that ca uh, cash is trash. You have to be able to deploy it into things that yield some sort of interest rate, okay, or some sort of return. But banks don't do it. If you're lucky, maybe you find a credit card or some sort of unique online bank that offers 1%, still not enough to hedge inflation, okay? So, if you look at some of those savvier investors, Kathy Wood, for example, Kevin O'Leary, for example, right, Warren Buffett, uh, Ray Dalio, many of these people are looking at other options, including myself. And what one thing to uh, to to think about is what is an asset that's relatively stable with a proven history of um, some sort of you know appreciation, whether it be you know three, four, five percent or higher, and also in a very liquid market. Right, and this is really important: is that you want it, uh, an asset that's very liquid. And so, when you think about this, a few things come to mind. But one of the big ones is mature blue chip stocks. Okay, so what I'm proposing to you all is to consider putting your cash in a bank into something of a very liquid, high yield asset, such as stocks. Now, you wouldn't do this to risky stocks because you don't want to have volatility in your in your cash, right? But there are certain stocks such as Verizon, such as AbbVie Laboratories, such as AT&T, uh, very big stable companies that pay dividends and that are appreciating year over year of a 6 to 10% growth rate. So I'm going to share the screen here, and we're going to look at um, where my cash is being stored. I have half of it in uh, Verizon. Uh, well, let me take a step back. So if you have $100,000 in your, in your bank account, which is probably too much to have anyways, um, it's probably good to have 80 to 90% of that uh, stored away into what I'm about to show you. The rest of it should be in the cash. Um, you, do, you should always have some cash reserves, but generally most of your cash should be sitting in something that's earning interest, right? And that's been a mindset for years, decades, okay? But today we just can't get it in banks. So let's look at Verizon here, okay? And we'll just do something um, over a course of, what is this, 30 years? All right, let's look at this. Now, the way to, to, to do this is we'll do a what is called a kegger calculator, and so the, the way we'll do this is we'll we'll say, okay, well, what has been the annual growth rate over time um, so as to what to expect for the stock? Okay, so Verizon, you look back in 1988, uh, sorry, 83, it was 776. Okay, so 776. And again, the point is here is we're, we're trying to understand what to expect from an annual appreciation rate. Okay, 776. And today that is 5857. 58, 57, now 83, right? So about 28 years, is that right? Nope, sorry, 38 years. So it's been 38 years, okay? So 
We can expect an annual appreciation rate on a Verizon stock of about four, five and a half percent, give or take. Okay, pretty solid. Now, what's interesting is this stock also pays a dividend, right? So, four percent here on a dividend, five and a half percent appreciation rate. You could expect to make almost one percent monthly on the stock, and that's a lot better than anything in a bank. And by the way, this is a very uh, you know, stable and secure company. Verizon's not going belly up. They're a very large company. Um, you could also look at AT and T, another one. Again, six and a half percent dividend yield. Probably very similar in terms of Kaker. And then the other one that I am recommending is uh, Abvi. This is a specialty pharmaceutical company. Very large, very stable. And um, let's see here. Again, we'll do the kegger. So we'll go back to 2012 when it was $33, All right? And today we're looking at 114.80. And that 2012, what is that, nine years? Okay, so the kegger on this, 15%. Now keep in mind, Abby has more volatility given the industry. Um, so you, you might see some more swings. So there's more risk. This is why I'm saying you put half of it in something like a staple, like a Verizon, another half in something like an Abvi that might have more upside on the, um, over time. So you're looking at 14% annually, uh, as well as a 5% dividend and yield, give or, give or take, this could earn you around a 16% annual return. Now I'm telling all you this because this is what the savvy investors are doing. They're saying, Hey, what companies right now are either appropriately priced in the market, undervalued, um, and have very stable appreciation rates. Let's put our cash there. And uh, it, we know it's liquid. So if we need the cash, we take it out and use it accordingly. So this is a technique for savvy investors to make sure they're hedging their risk against inflation. Inflation is here. It's going to be here for some time. And it's going to be volatile over the next 6 to 12 months. So keep your cash in something like this to ensure the store of value as well as the appreciation. So if you like what you heard, give it a thumbs up. Um, and I'm curious to know how, how you're keeping your cash from lo losing value by just sitting in a bank. Thanks.